In this video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the latest version of Blender to create this pair of sunglasses. Now before we model anything, the first thing we need to do is to find references. I managed to find this website, sunglasswarehouse.com. It has a lot of uh, reference pictures which you can download. So I picked this model and then I picked on the images and click to magnify and then just right mouse click and save the image into my computer. So I managed to download the front view, side view, the top view and I'm going to use this free photo editor to assemble them into a reference image like this one you see over here. Now this free photo image editor is known as PhotoP so you just need to go to this website photop.com and it has all the functions of Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop you should be right at home using this software. So let me just show you how I assemble this image, which we will then bring into Blender to be used as our building reference. So let's start from a new project. Okay, let me just close all these previous images. And we'll start from a new one. So go and click on File, Open, and then go to the location which we have downloaded the reference images. So I'm going to start off with the uh, front image here. And then I'm going to open up another image, which is the side view. And then the top view. And then I'm going to combine them all together. So first I'm going to increase the canvas size of this image. So to do that, I'm going to go over to image and canvas size then I'm going to click on anchor on the left hand side here and then I'm going to increase the width to double the size I'm going to put uh, 2000 no sorry I'm going to make it 4000 I'm going to double the size so that now if I zoom out you need to hold down the control okay first I need to go to the zoom function then holding down to control or rather going down to uh, holding down to alt and then left mouse click to zoom out okay so now we're going to go over to the side view then i'm going to press ctrl a to select all press ctrl c to copy everything go back to the original image here and then press ctrl v to paste you notice that the pasted image is much smaller and we are pasting it as a secondary layer so i'm going to use the command to uh, transform this image so that it fits the size of this uh, front view so the shortcut key is uh, alt Control t And then holding down to the Shift key while maintaining the aspect ratio, you just click on a corner and click and drag until you get it roughly the same size as our front reference. Now, the front reference picture here is taken at a slightly tilted angle. So I'm expecting the bottom here to be slightly uh, longer. So I'm going to just adjust this until uh, it is about lined up to this edge here. I'm going to press Enter. Also, you'll notice that your version of PhotoP might not have these rulers here. So to turn on the rulers, click on View and then Enable Rulers. Left mouse click on the ruler to drag, click and drag down a reference line. So we'll use that as our reference. So click and drag down another one. So I just want to make sure that the, uh, the height of this lens actually matches this. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that we can see the size. And I'm expecting to transform this front view down a little bit because like I said, this is taken at an angle. So I'm going to select this front view portion and then I'm going to stretch it down. So I'm going to hold down to Alt, left mouse click. I'm still in my zoom mode. Then I'm going to use the selection, selection box, left mouse click and drag until I select only the front portion here. Then using the Alt, Control T, Okay, make sure that you go to the background layer instead of the top layer, otherwise you'll be transforming this area, or rather, uh, not this one. So click on the background layer, then press alt Control t Then this time, you're not going to hold down to Shift, you just need to click and drag this until the scale is slightly bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to press Enter. So this looks just about right. Now I'm going to click on the top layer, which is this side view here. I'm going to use my cursor key right just to select okay I make sure that I have to 
deselect the uh, rectangle select so I'm gonna select and then deselect and then click on this layer then you can press control sorry uh, click on this layer and then uh, use the cursor key to move the layer down so you can see that I'm pressing the, uh, the cursor key up down several times until it just about lines up okay you want to try to get the line up as close as possible so that you can match the scale of this uh, of this pair of sunglasses so I think this looks just about all right okay so right now I'm gonna bring in the top view so the top view is over here I'm gonna click on this tab to select the top view press ctrl A ctrl A to select all and then press ctrl C to copy then go back to the original image now before we paste it we have to increase the size of this canvas again and in order to accommodate the top view so I'm going to go to over to image again go to canvas size and then click on the anchor uh, at this position here and this time the height I'm going to give a height of uh, maybe 5000 and click OK so now you can see we have plenty of space uh, for us to paste our top view and now we can paste by pressing ctrl V to paste the top view now again the top view is a little bit small so we're going to transform this layer so to fit the front view so press the combination alt ctrl T holding down the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio and left mouse click on the corner and drag to scale this front view up I'm just going to continue to scale this until it roughly matches the size and just a little bit more okay and then I think we got a got it close to where we want it to be now you can also use guidelines right to help you uh, match the uh, size and scale just by dragging off the ruler so now I can see that our front or rather the top uh, alignment right is slightly off just by a little bit so we can use the cursor key to move this a little bit to the left the left cursor key and I think this one looks just about right and then I'm just gonna press enter to finish the transform and you notice that the top layer the white portion here is blocking this area so I'm gonna use the box selection then I'm just gonna select this area here making sure that the top layer is selected and press delete to review the front and the side next I'm gonna use the cropping tool and I'm gonna crop this entire image until I see all the three views okay and then I'm gonna press enter and now we are ready to export this image as our image reference to model the uh, pair of sunglasses so go and click on file export export as as a PNG and then you can zoom out to see uh, what is it like by rolling your mouse back and this is the final image that you will see uh, when you bring it into uh, blender so I'm gonna save this save as and I'm just gonna replace the, the previous one that I've done and then save okay so now I can bring this image into blender I'm gonna start from new so click on new general don't save now there's a plugin that you need to uh, install in order to get this to work so make sure you go to the preferences go to the add-ons and then look for import images as planes so search for import i and then activate this import images as planes and uh, to activate it uh, by clicking on the checkbox then we can close that then i'm going to get rid of the default queue by pressing x then uh, go ahead and just file import images as planes so you can see now we have this add-on activated then I'm going to travel to my uh, folder containing my reference images and here it is so this is my reference image which I prepared in photo P and then just gonna bring this in so if you can't see the uh, image you have to switch over to uh, material preview so now I can see the image so I'm going to scale this up by pressing S to scale it up okay so I think this is a, a good size so now I'm going to go to the side view by pressing uh, 3 then press G to move it up so right now I'm going to align the side view for now I'm going to move this 
side view until it matches this location okay and then now I'm gonna push this side view until it is further back in this x-axis so in the perspective view you can use your manipulator tool and then just push this back I'm gonna duplicate another copy you can press shift D to duplicate another copy press X to lock in the x-axis you can press uh, alt uh, Alt G, Alt G to move it back to the original location, and then I'm going to rotate it along the Z axis. So R Z ninety. Okay, it's uh, rotating the wrong way. So I'm going to press R. I'm going to press Alt R to reset the rotation. I'm going to press R X ninety, then R Z minus ninety. Okay, it's not rotating the way I want. Actually, okay, this is okay. This is actually the orientation that I want. Okay, so let me just uh, repeat that again. Alt R to reset the rotation, then Alt G to reset the uh, movement. So I'm gonna press um, R X nine zero, which is rotate along the x-axis ninety degrees. Then I'm gonna use the uh, move manipulator and then pull this up until my front view is lined up with this line here. Now to make it easier to see, I'm going to switch over to my front view by pressing number one on my keypad or you can press the tilde key and then move your pie, pie selection to front view and then you can use the manipulator and move the reference until the front view, the bottom of the glasses is lined up like so. Okay, I need to push this back just a little bit more. Okay, so now uh, what we need to do is we need to push this back and then I'm going to duplicate this, Shift D to duplicate and press Y to push it back to this location here. Then I'm going to rotate this uh, reference along the X axis, but this time uh, so that it's facing upwards. So I can reset the rotation again by pressing Alt R and right now it is rot uh, actually uh, facing the correct direction. So I'm going to push this down. I'm going to go over to the top view so you can press the tilde key. Okay, press the tilde key. The tilde key is the, the key that is next to your number one in your number row. And then go over to my top view. And then move the sunglasses reference until it matches the rest. In fact, you can use, can temporarily get this images planes, right, to move in so that you can move these uh, references until they intersect one another so that we know that they are actually lined up. Okay, so this one looks pretty lined up to me. Okay, I might have to change to my uh, branded preview. Let's see how that will react. Okay, right now you can see the, uh, because there's some transparency going on, I'm not able to see the intersection that well. So I'm gonna just eyeball this this look about right I'm gonna select this and then just push this out just a little bit more and I think that looks just about right so I'm gonna push this back and then push this down and then with our references done we can actually start to do our modeling now to actually make it a little bit clearer I'm gonna switch back to my material preview I'm gonna select this image reference I'm gonna go to edit mode by pressing tab then I'm gonna press ctrl R and then I'm just gonna uh, left mouse click and slide down to this portion here Control R again but this time go around this section here and then uh, insert the edge loop here now the reason why I'm doing this is so that if I can go to face mode shift select all these faces and then uh, delete the faces away so that I know that this is my front view reference I'm going to do the same for the side view so uh, press tab to get out of object to go, go back to object mode select this uh, side view reference then press tab to go into edit mode control R left mouse click then control R again and then move to the edge left mouse click and then slide until we isolate the side view then press number three to go to face selection mode then select the faces shift select the faces and then press delete or X to delete away the faces now press tab to go back to object mode then finally we're gonna select the top view go to the top view Control, uh, go to edit mode by pressing tab, control R to insert edge loop, left mouse click, control R, left mouse click along the edge, slide it down until it isolates uh, the top view. Press number three to go to face selection mode, okay, and then 
shift select click on the first face you want to delete and then shift select the rest of the faces press x and delete away the faces so right now we have our references done great so now let's save this file first and we can start to model our sunglasses so the first thing i want to create first is a cube yeah so i shouldn't have deleted the original cube because the cube is what i'll be used to create the base shape to build the entire uh, pair of sunglasses now what we are going to do is we're just going to build half of the uh, sunglasses so the basis of this sunglasses is the cube so i'm going to create the cube first shift a and then create the cube all right and next i'm going to go to edit mode and i'm going to subdivide this cube so right mouse click on it and then subdivide go over to the subdivide option and then give a good subdivision uh, probably about 10 subdivisions okay i think this will be uh, good enough in fact maybe i'll just cut it down a little bit okay, maybe nine okay i don't want to have too many uh, polygons to deal with uh, while i'm cutting this out later so next i'm going to apply an operation okay alt s okay alt s is this a uh, string flatten actually i i should be using alt shift s okay no it's not alt s it's alt shift s so the command that i want to use is to convert this into a sphere all right okay next i'm going to press tab to go back to object mode and uh, let me just uh, change the shading to solid mode and show you what this uh, cube sphere looks like all right and I want, want to apply a smooth to this uh, cube. So right mouse click on and shade it to smooth. And then I'm gonna turn back my material preview again. Now, why did I want to change this into a sphere? Uh, and why did I use a, a sphere instead? Because I want to keep this nice topology because I'm gonna use this topology to create the lens shape. Okay, so first I'm going to um, select the sphere and then go over to the object properties under the visibility or rather the viewport display and instead of displaying it as a textured i'm going to de display it as wired all right so now i'm going to switch over to my side view i'm going to use my number pad to number three to go to the side view and then i'm going to position this sphere until it is right about the location here so I'm going to use the curvature of this reference to uh, create the lens, the lens of the sunglasses. So the first thing I want to do is I want to position my cursor right about here. So the cursor will be activated. You can use the cursor placement tool by clicking here, then left mouse click here. All right, and then I'm going to go over to, over to my top view. You can see the cursor is now placed here. I want the cursor to be right about here. Then I'm going to go to my front view, which is my number pad one. And then I'm going to click on this position here. Now, if I keep clicking this, right, it will always snap to the um, uh, any known position or, or 3D object. So uh, I'm going to actually project this onto this sphere in instead. So I'm going to reposition this, uh, this sphere. So I need to go back to the select box, select the sphere. Press G, X, and then move it slightly to this position. And then I'm going to press G, G, Z, and then to move it slightly up like so. Okay, and then I'm going to reposition my cursor. Go to the posi uh, cursor position and then left mouse click. So right now my cursor should be sitting on top of this sphere. Okay, why am I doing this? Okay, right now it's still not sitting on the top of the sphere. Maybe I should go to solid view and also change my sphere to... Uh, texture okay and then let's try that again let's go to the front view then i'm going to use a shortcut command shift or actually no we're still in the cursor selection but let me go back to my selection box now if you want to reposition the cursor uh, without using this tool you can actually hold down the shift key and then right mouse click so right now my cursor should be sticking on top of the surface of my sphere which is what's happening okay so uh, there's a reason why I need to position the uh, the cursor right about here. Notice the shape of this lens here. Okay, the um, the circular, uh, I would say the 
the pole, the circular pole of the uh, the lens, okay, is actually right at this point around here. Okay, so we want to position the um, the cursor cursor position here. All right, and then we're going to use that as our scaling reference so that we can scale this sphere up. So right now we're going to go to the side view, and I'm going to click on this transform pivot point to 3D cursor so that when I scale it's going to scale along the 3D cursor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scale this up and also you can also use rotate until the curvature of the sphere matches the reference okay again if you can't see through the sphere you can always uh, select the sphere and go over to the object uh, visibility viewport display properties and go to wireframe and I can see that this curvature actually is uh, very close to what I needed. So I'm going to just rotate this just a little bit more. And I'm satisfied with this curvature. So from this sphere, this is where I'm going to cut out my lens. Okay, so right now I'm going to go to my front view. And uh, basically, I'm just going to cut this until I have a nice uh, lens which I can build the framework of these glasses. Now, on second thought right right now I'm looking at this and I realize that my my sphere right might not be subdivided enough so no problem I'm gonna switch my uh, transform pivot point back to median then I'm gonna select this sphere and then I'm gonna subdivide it again okay so uh, I'm gonna go to edit and then I'm gonna subdivide okay and I think this is good enough then I'm gonna run another alt shift s on it and then just slide my cursor to the right uh, then it will should be alt shift s and then you just keep on moving it to the right until it's maximum curvature all right so right now i have enough faces so that i can cut the lens okay so first i'm gonna get rid of half of this uh, faces i don't need half of all these faces i can delete them away Uh, faces and edges okay let me undo that I should have delete faces so press X and then delete away the face okay right now it's not deleting the face behind because I need to turn on this uh, toggle x-ray let's try that again drag a box over this and then press X and delete away the faces so I only need this portion here to build my lens so let's go over to the front and see and I think I have more than enough uh, faces to do that so now I'm going to use my marquee tool the select lasso tool and then select all the faces that I do not need okay and then just delete them you can also press the uh, press C to bring up the circular tool you can paint over the faces that you don't really need okay so this will allow you to create a very nice Uh, circular face so I'm gonna leave this number of faces and next I want to create a curve which I'm going to use a projection cut tool to cut out this section so let's go to object mode and then I'm gonna create a spline or a bezier curve so shift a and then go and create a curve create a bezier curve I'm gonna press R X 90 so that the curve is facing me and then Okay, make sure you're in the front view. So if you're not in the front view, press your tab key or rather the tilde key and then go over to your front view. <coughs> All right, select the curve, go to edit mode and then uh, grab the controls. Okay, and then start to extrude an extra portion. You can actually rotate this. Press G to move it. You can press S to scale it down also you can press G and then rotate this press G and press E again to extrude another curve and press R to rotate press G you can grab the handle here press G to extend then same thing for here you can grab the handle to extend then press uh, Alt C Alt C to close this curve so it become a closed curve Okay, so you can change the properties of this curve. For example, if I want to make these two handles independent, you can press V and then you can say uh, change it into free so that one of the handles will not affect the other handles. 
okay so to change the handle type is V and I'm gonna change this to free I'm gonna move this one to here Press G get okay, grab this okay so I want to create a nice curve that matches the shape of the reference or the outline okay we're almost there and I think I'm satisfied with this shape so now I'm going to use this curve I'm going to go press tab to go to object mode I'm going to use this curve to actually cut this uh, this uh, sphere all right or part of this sphere to create the lens so to do that first you select the curve then shift select the object then go to edit mode then go over to face and then use this uh, Okay, let's see where it is. There's a knife cut. Okay, let's see where's my knife cut to. Knife project. All right, under mesh, then knife project. So in knife project, right, you're basically using the curve as like a knife to project and cut through this uh, this shape here. So right now, notice that the center portion here is selected because it's changed into this orange selection. I'm going to use select invert selection and then I'm going to press X to delete away those faces and then we what we end up with is a perfect lens all right so I'm gonna select this lens shape I'm uh, just press tab to go back to object mode so go over here and then display this texture so you can see that I have a perfect looking lens shape Okay, but the, the only thing that we need to fix here is the, uh, the topology. We want to try to keep everything four-sided as much as possible. So let's go and fix the edges. So I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to switch over to wireframe and then press 1 to go. 1 in my number pad to go into the front view. Then uh, press tab to go to edit mode. I'm going to go to vertex, vertex selection. And then I'm going to see, uh, I'm use the box selection. And then I'm going to try to fix these uh, vertices here. Now the Bezier curve, I don't need it anymore, so I'm just going to hide it. Now I'm going to enable this feature called in the options uh, in the top right hand corner here called um, Auto Merge. All right. So what happens here is that if I select one of the vertex and I press GG, it's going to slide along the edge. And then if it hits another vertex, it's going to automatically merge. I'm going to do so until all the vertices or all the faces right at least uh, gives me uh, a four-sided face or at least a three-sided face so I'm gonna press this one GG then slide this until GG and then slide it in now if the vertices are very close you can actually uh, merge them together for example let's say I'm gonna grab these three vertices I'm gonna merge them together you can press M and then say merge as center so now all of them have merged together same thing for this you can press M merge as center if not, if you want to maintain this shape, you can select this vertex and press GG. GG and slide. GG and slide. Okay, so this I'm going to leave it as four sided. Okay, GG and slide this down. GG and slide this down. Okay, this is four sided. I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay, so this one is a bit tricky. This one is a multi-sided uh, the shape, and then I'll have to maybe um, collapse these two together. So I'm gonna select these two vertices and then um, press M, merge them at the center. I'm gonna pr produce this very weird shape. So I'm gonna just gonna spread out these uh, shapes out a little bit. Now, 
some of you might be wondering can you actually slip this process skip this process rather um, you can but then you end up with a very bad topology so that's why I'm trying to keep everything as uh, foresighted as much as I can for the remaining uh, faces Okay, so I'm going to split this edge. You can go to edge mode by pressing 2, select here, right mouse click and subdivide. Then we have another extra edge, so we create a four-sided face here. And then I'm going to join these two together. Merge at the center. So we have a four-sided face here. So okay, so some parts of it is not perfect, but at least we got all the faces to be uh, four-sided. Okay might not be the great topo uh, best topology but at least later on when we extract out the edges from the sides here it's going to be um, much better so with this shape okay we can easily build the frame of our sunglasses so I'm going to switch back to my uh, material uh, reference okay first I want to apply a thickness to this and uh, I'm going to go to the modifier and then apply a solidify and then I'm going to increase the thickness so that is roughly about the thickness of the lens and for the normals uh, okay I'm going to click on this options here face normals or rather not face normals under normals I'm going to turn on auto smooth so that we have this hard edge that you can see uh, like this like this all right so let me just check the thickness of my lens maybe I don't want it to be that thick let me go back to my solidify and then just bring down the thickness just a little bit you can hold down to the shift key so that you can adjust finely like so okay so right now I'm gonna apply this uh, solidify so I click on this drop down and apply so right now we have a uh, lens uh, that is uh, solidified and then also we have a nice edge that runs around the the lens which we can use to form the frame so I'm gonna select this uh, this edge here so go over to the um, face selection mode then hold down to your alt left mouse click to select the loop so make sure your edge right is just over the edge like that so I'm gonna show you how to select again move your cursor over here holding down the alt and left mouse click and you can see this edge loop is now selected alright so I'm, I'm gonna create this frame here so I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and then I can press S followed by Y because I'm going to scale along the Y okay but it is not working for me um, actually uh, what I want to do is something else anyway I duplicated this ring I'm going to separate this selected ring out okay, I'm going to just show you this is what the ring looks like okay I'm right mouse click so it jumps back into place I'm going to press P to peel it off peel off the selection Okay, so right now I have a secondary option. So this cube, original cube, I'm going to call it the lens in the outliner. And then this uh, cube, I'm going to go out, go to object mode. This cube dot zero one, I'm going to call this the frame. Okay, so now I got the frame. I can go to edit mode. Now you can press forward slash in your numpad or under your view. Uh, let's see, local view, toggle local view, so that we can only just concentrate on this ring of faces that we extracted so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, make this uh, a little bit thicker okay uh, rather than selecting all of this and scaling along the y-axis well I think the best way would be to go over to the edge selection mode and holding down the alt and left mouse click to select the edge if you go to wireframe you can see like this then press G followed by Y to make it a little bit thicker and then I'm going to do the same for this one press G followed by Y just push it out make it a little bit thicker so I'm going to be using this to create the framework okay so now I'm going to press uh, view then under the uh, local view toggle local view so right now I'm out of uh, local view so now you can see the frame is coming out slightly better like this okay so I can select the group of faces here press number three to go to face selection mode select the face 
and then I'm gonna press um, E to extrude okay when you extrude you can have the option of extruding along normals so I'm gonna use the option extrude along normals so when you pull it out you can see that I can start to pull push the frame out from the edge of the lens okay from this framework I can start to shape and model my spectacle frames so I'm gonna turn back turn on my material preview and go over to the front view now with this object selected I'm gonna go over to the uh, option properties or the um, object properties and display as wire so that we can see through this and now you can see I can grab the faces here and then go over to selection and I can start to shape this to match my reference I'm gonna scale it along the x-axis until this is flat just press G to match this and uh, okay if I need another extra loop here I can press ctrl R insert another extra loop then press 1 to go to vertex mode and press G and start to basically just move the vertices until it matches the shape of your image reference okay, let me just move this aside Okay, right about this right about this point you can see a transition to connect to this area here so I'm going to choose maybe this three faces here um, to extrude out okay so maybe I'll go over to the face section mode select these three faces and then press E to extrude and then right mouse click so that the faces jump back and then instead press G followed by X move the face to the left like so and I'm going to press S X 0 so that they all line up flat and press G X to move it until it reaches the center here okay notice that the objects pivot point is represented by this uh, orange dot here we're gonna reposition it until it is at the center here so to do that I'm gonna select one of the faces here then press shift S cursor to select it then go to object mode by pressing tab then right mouse click origin to 3d cursor so right now the origin has been changed to here now the reason why I want to do that so that I can apply a mirror modifier apply a mirror modifier along the x-axis so that the other side will be created okay great so I'm gonna get rid of these center faces okay so that the, there's the mirror will not contain any faces in the center like so okay so I'm gonna now I'm gonna continue to reshape my model so go press 1 to go uh, go to edit mode first by pressing tab then press 1 to go to vertex mode press GZ to move along the Z axis so GZ and then just move this down we can press ctrl R and another extra edge loop so that we can create this edge here and then I'm just gonna move the vertices until it matches the shape of our reference notice that we have a lot of vertices that we can move so just move these vertices until they match your outline or your reference now should you want to like spread out these like um, edge loops right you can use a this uh, I can double click to select this and can press GG sorry uh, alt left mouse click then gg to slide so alt left mouse click gg and then slide it to spread out these uh, edge loops okay so alt left mouse click then gg to slide right this is so alt to select this edge loop then gg to slide this is just more for me to spread out the edge loops okay so that uh, we don't have any edge loops that are too close together so alt alt left mouse click then GG All right one to go back to vertex mode so I can grab the vertices okay just press G to move this and I think I want to move these screw of vertices up so GG to slide them up GG to slide it up okay I think I need another extra edge loop right about here so control R to insert one edge loop here so that I can create this round curvature shape
okay I think uh, roughly we have this shape uh, front in the front side done nicely so let's go to the top and we're gonna create this uh, rounded uh, shape so we're gonna use something called soft selection right to bend this to match this uh, the shape that we have okay so first I'm gonna select use the box uh, box to the select and we're gonna use the uh, shear tool okay and then I'm gonna shear it along the let's see along the y-axis and I think this one works pretty well okay I think I want to select all the vertices and then shear together like that and then the lens right now is slightly out of orientation I'm gonna go back to object mode select this lens here then press R Z to rotate okay make sure the rotation is okay I need to reset my pivot point because the pivot point right now is original sphere so I'm going to reset the pivot by right mouse click set origin origin to geometry and then I'm going to press RZ and just rotate the lens until it matches the orientation of my frame okay so far so good okay and I'm going to go back and select the frame go back to the uh, edit mode then go and okay let's try to rotate this manually you can turn on soft selection mode by pressing O then when you rotate this you can see you can use your uh, middle mouse to increase or reduce the amount of influence so roughly I got the shape to match uh, this section here and then for this section here I'm gonna grab these a bunch of vertices then press G Z sorry G Y so I'm moving along the Y axis so that I have this nice curvature that's going around here then these guys here I'm just gonna push it in down a little bit try to match the top reference okay so far so good alright so I'm gonna switch this to this object back to solid view in the viewport or rather textured view and then this is where we can start to create the uh, what do you call that the nose pads okay and uh, I definitely need some more extra uh, topology here so I'm gonna press ctrl R and then insert one edge loop in the center here again maybe one more here okay so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna just try to reflow the uh, topology a little bit because I need to have some uh, topology that flows down this way so I'm gonna use my knife to cut here to here and then I'm gonna press ctrl R to insert one edge loop right about no I think I'm gonna cut here directly. Yep, and press K to cut, 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 and then just finish the cut here first. Then I'm gonna try to insert one more edge loop. Control R, insert one edge loop here. Okay, and there you go. Just cut here. I'm gonna get rid of these edges select this edge and this edge this edge holding now shift select these edges and then press X and then dissolve the edges okay because I want to keep it I want to add the edge loop the end here and then these two vertices to match or merge together GG and then just join together okay so once I've done that I'll have enough faces for me to pull out to form the uh, nose pad area so I'm gonna just press this G okay I need to turn off my soft selection press O to turn it off okay so now I'm gonna go to face selection mode select these faces and then extrude them out E to extrude it out to form the nose pad all right so this one is a little bit tricky I'll have to go to edge mode select this one and press GG to slide it down 
and then just run G Y to push it in. G Y to push this slightly in. G G to slide this in, and I think this should be good enough for the nose edge. Let's go to the top view, and again we're gonna switch this into a wireframe. And we can see that all oh, ours is a little bit too much. So I'm going to go to vertex mode and then just turn on soft selection again. Press O to turn it on. Press G, Y, reduce the size of influence and then just move this down. Okay, I think this is close enough. Okay, for this demo purposes, I think I think this is good enough. All right, so I'm gonna switch this back to my textured view. And we can tweak it a little bit more. Make this round a little bit. Okay, next we're gonna move on to the uh, Okay, the sides here. All right. So for this one, you just need to create a uh, a cube and then just remodel this. So I'm going to create a brand new cube. I'm going to cube, or I'm going to reset the position of the cursor. So press Shift C, then press Shift A, create another cube, and then uh, I'm going to position the cube until it's uh, around this location. So press G, move the cube here, then go to the side view. Press number three in your uh, number pad and press G move the Q over here I'm gonna turn on I'm gonna go over to edit mode and then I'm gonna do wireframe okay problem with wireframe is that I can't see the image reference anymore so again in my display as I'm gonna display as a wireframe so in edit mode scale it down scale Z uh, SZ and then you can press R to rotate then you can press G to move these vertices until it roughly matches the thickness of the reference. Then uh, you can grab these vertices and just press G and move it up. Then you can press S Z to scale along the Z axis. Now with the vertices selected, you can press E to extrude another section out like so. You can press S Z again to scale it down. Press E again to extrude another section. Press Z again to scale it down, rotate it down a bit, and then press E again to extrude, then rotate it, and then press S Z to scale it up. The okay, reason why I press um, you say using S Z is because um, if you if you just scale it right, everything is going to be quite um, wide. And in this case right now, my handles is way too thick, so let's fix that by going to the top. Select like all the vertices, okay, press S X to scale it down until it's nice and flat. And using the uh, top view reference, we can just adjust the curvature by just moving the vertices to the side like so. Okay, so right now we have the basic uh, shape of this uh, the sides, okay, the I don't know what you call this. I guess this will be the handles. Okay, so right now I just want to um, adjust my frame so that it matches the position of my side handles. Okay, so I'm going to select this and I'm going to uh, refine it a little bit. Go to edit mode and then grab these vertices. Uh, scale on the Z axis, rotate. Okay, maybe just press G, just move this back a bit more. Let's form a little gap. Now I'm not going to follow this exactly, so press Ctrl R to insert one more edge loop right about here. Just S and Z to scale it up slightly and just refine this shape a little bit more. Okay, there is a slight taper around here, so let's let's give it a taper. Um, select the face here and press E 
then press S X. Okay, my soft selection is on. I'm gonna press O to turn it off. S X and then just Yeah, just move it to the side like that. Okay, I'm gonna add and one more edge loop here, control R, insert one edge loop right close to the edge here. So to keep this shape one I once I sub um, once I subdivide it. Okay, so right now we only have one lens and uh, the frame has been mirrored. So let's mirror the lens. So same thing as before, we're going to position the, the center point here. So um, I'm going to hold on to shift and then right mouse click so that it, it lands in the center here. Then I'm going to press shift S and uh, cursor to grid so that it snaps in the center. Now select this. Select this lens, then right mouse click, set origin to 3D cursor. Then while it's still being selected, go and apply a mirror modifier. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same for the handles here. I'm going to, for the handle display, I'm going to change it back to textured. And I'm going to do the same thing. Now notice the, uh, the, the lens, right, is not in the correct position. And now the reason is because we rotated the lens previously. So what we should have done is that we should have reset or freeze the rotation of the lens so uh, let's go back to the um, mirror modifier and then let's delete this i'm going to select the lens again and then i'm going to press um, control a control a and then i'm going to apply this thing called all transforms so once i've done that then i can apply the mirror modifier and it should fit the other frame perfectly okay so that is one thing that uh, you should do if you encounter that problem early on okay now for this uh, handle okay I'm gonna go over to the top view then I'm gonna press uh, shift C to re to reset the cursor position then right mouse click set origin to 3d cursor and it's perfectly at the center here so I can apply a mirror modifier so I should get the extra handle on the other side now for the refinement like additional of all these hinges and all these uh, studs and all that uh, I'm, I'm not going to show you how to do that you can uh, apply that uh, details yourself okay so right now I'm going to refine the, the the look of this so first I'm going to apply a uh, bevel a bevel modifier okay and then after that I'm going to apply a subdivision surface so that it's got a nice and rounded surface looking like this same thing for the handles, I'm going to apply for the bevel, bevel modifier, and then after that, I'll apply a subdivision surface. Okay, so let's take a look at it. All right, so the lens right needs to be a little bit bigger. So let's go and resize the lens a little bit. So let's go and select, in edit mode, select all the faces, and then just press S and scale it up ever so slightly so that it cuts into the frame alright so now there are no gaps it fills up nicely okay so let's apply some basic materials so go over to the material side apply a uh, plastic material okay let me just give it a base black color and you can see that this object right although it's subdivided is not smooth so I'm going to right mouse click and then shade it smooth Okay, same thing for the frame. I'm going to select the frame and then I'm going to shade it smooth. And I'm going to apply the same plastic material to that, which I have it over here. And then for the lens, I'm going to apply a, let's create a new glass shader. And uh, let's see, right now the glass is a bit rough, so I'm going to reduce the roughness. Then maybe give it a color tint like the yellow color tint that we had earlier on for our reference I'll reduce the roughness furthermore and there you have it this is the glasses is almost done now if you want to um, make this into a fixed pair of glasses okay right now the, this these pieces are still like separate pieces you will have to go and uh, apply all the modifiers so that they become uh, permanent pieces and then if you want uh, all of them to become like a single piece you will have to apply all the modifiers here like the mirror that you see okay let, let me just do that right now i'm going to apply apply it so right now the the lens is a single object the framework as well uh, for mirror i'm going to turn on clipping so that the, the center will be merged together all right 
So I'm going to hit on apply the mirror. I'm going to apply the bevel. I'm going to apply the, um, the subdivision. Maybe I'm not going to apply that one. Same thing for the handles and the bevel. Okay, so now we have the handles, the frame, and the lens. So if you want, you can make the frame the parent. So I'm going to select these two, the handles, the lens, and then the frame. Holding down the shift to select, and then making sure the frame is the last one to be selected. Press Ctrl P, and then parent all of them to this frame. So that now, if I move the frame around, the lens will follow. Okay, so that's how you create a pair of sunglasses so let's just make it look a little bit nicer let's create a floor plane scale this up and then i'm going to make this floor plane right now we are in the ev ev shader i'm going to change over to cycles renderer and then uh, for the ground plane i'm going to change it into a under the object properties i'm going to change it into a shadow catcher under visibility shadow catcher and then we can go and see what it looks like rendered. And there you go. And in our render output, okay, under the renderer here, render properties, go over the film and then turn on transparent. Okay, so this is what our glasses look like rendered in cycles. Okay. So essentially, that is how you create a pair of sunglasses in blender okay let me just bring in one more image i'm going to bring in a uh, 360 image so go over to the um, environment color click on this dot here go to environmental texture okay uh, you can download several uh, hdrs okay from uh, polyhaven okay then uh, this is a hdr that i actually made myself using a 360 camera so if I go over to rendered mode, so let's wait for the HDR to be loaded. You should be able to see the environment uh, showing up. Okay, somehow it's not showing up. Let me change it to material preview and then back to rendered. Okay, maybe I have to look through the camera. Nope. Let's see what is actually blocking the view. Uh, Okay, the environment is actually there. Maybe perhaps because it is in transparent. Let's uncheck this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so I made it transparent. That's why the environment wasn't visible. Yeah, so this is what it looks like in a 360 environment. Okay, so let me just go over to the camera view by pressing number pad zero. Or you can click on this button here. You can go to the camera view. Press G, Z, Z to pull out the camera. And this is what the renderer will see. And then let's do a test render. Render a single image. It is using the cycles renderer. And then this is what the sunglasses look like. So like I said, the uh, other embellishments like the, the, the stud or letters or hinges, you can try to model it yourself and then attach it to the uh, sunglasses. And with that, I'll end this tutorial. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, if you have any modeling requests, please put it on my channel.